Hello and welcome back. My name is Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, to all of my digital mutants out there, I am a little under the weather, but I'm going to try to get through these videos and have them out there for you because I know they're important and you want to finish your tornadoes of doom and power. So, I am trudging through the sickness, so if I'm coughing, please excuse me. Um, so, in the, the last videos we are looking at, we were finishing up the tornado, and we want to be able to bring this tornado into our other scene. Um, so, we have a scene that we're going to be using, and right now, you can see my settings are actually pretty high for my tornado, but I'm still getting pretty good performance out of this. I can show you what my numbers are currently. This is not the same tornado that I was using in the previous video. Um, I don't have that file anymore, so I just rebuilt another um, another little tornado. And it actually only has one set of particles on it which are going up. So there are no particles coming down uh, on this one. Now, yours should have both sets of particles, but just in the interest of showing how to cache this out and how to um, send this out of Maya, I just decided to make another tornado. So, with that being said, if I let this run up, you can see that I have a base resolution of 100. Now, like I've told you before, if you do not have a powerful or beefy machine, I would not go over 40 when you're just checking it out and seeing how it looks and everything else. So, you know, here's my, here's my tornado kind of in full steam going crazy and dissipation's good and everything's everything's working really well on this so I want to be able to save this out so that I can take this into another file or into another program maybe so one of the best ways to get information from uh, one program to another usually would be FBX files or FBox files but when you're talking about dynamics and simulation, one of the best ways to get your data between between programs is an Alembic cache file. And Alembic cache files are awesome because they can store all of this data. Now there is an issue. So if I come in here right now and I go export to Alembic cache, and I'm going to set my export to something more realistic. Let's say like 3,000 frames. And Actually, I don't even think I need that many. Let's just do a thousand. Because by a thousand, by, even by the first part right here, I'm at 122. And it's already showing my tornado fully formed, uh, all my atmospheric. So let's not even do that high. Let's just do 500. So I'm going to rewind this, play this back. And you can see everything forms up really nicely. It's pretty quick. <coughs> uh, the machine this is running on does have quite a bit of RAM so that's one of the things that helps to run this simulation and actually calculate it the other thing is the amount of cores on this machine so <clears throat> and I've had this question asked to me because people have said before you know hey I can't get mine to do such and such so you can see right now with my simulation running that I am I'm I'm about 40% CPU usage so I'm hitting like 40% which isn't bad cuz I have other things that are running I have a ton of other things that are running I'm recording this video I have um <clears throat> I actually have pages open inside of a browser and you can see I'm only using 15 I'm only using 15 gigs of memory which isn't bad 15 out of 40 so just be very and the reason why I bring this up, and it's not to be like, oh, I have way more cores than you. The issue, I, the re issue, and the reason why I bring this up is that you want to be very careful because if you're rendering, if you're rendering simulations on a computer that can't really handle it, this will sit at really high CPU usage, and over time, what that can do is that can actually start to affect the the CPU of your computer. So this machine is actually water cooled and there's two chips and it's a big enough case and there's enough RAM so there's there's a reason why I'm showing you this and not showing it to you just because like you know to be like oh I'm I'm better than you um, I'm not <laughs> I just happen to have a little bit better hardware so just keep in mind that this is gonna be 
and this is a really old system at this point. Like this is a, a L5640, so this is not a new, a brand new machine. But it is a 24 core. It is a 24 thread machine, not cores, but 12 cores and 24 threads. So um, that's actually pretty helpful. So anyway, <clears throat> I show you that because I don't want you to burn your computer up. I don't want you to burn up your, especially if you're trying to do this on a laptop. I've had some people say they're doing this on a laptop, and I'm like, oh my dear God, like your laptop must be screaming at you because. Uh, at 40% CPU usage, most laptops are gonna, the fan's gonna stay on constantly. And when that little fan dies, that's what's cooling your whole entire computer. So without that fan, your computer is nothing but a giant uh, hot box. So, anyway, I've got my, <clears throat> got my simulation in here. So you see I have my fluids, I have my nucleus, I use the new end particles for this. I didn't use the older um, particles. I use the new end particles. doesn't matter which one you use because we're not even going to see them. So I'm only using them to push the fluids and make the effect of the cone appear. That's all I'm using my fluids for. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's if you, <laughs> if you care, that's really all I'm doing with it. So, now, keep in mind as well is that I am in Maya 2015. As I've told many people, I just am not a fan of the newer Maya versions. Maya 2015 is less annoying than some of the other newer versions. 2016, most people are using that, um, so you'll have to look in different places for your fluid cache. Um, so you can see inside of here, it's actually pretty simple. I can go here to my fluid and actually create a new cache and do my fluid cache. Now, the fluid cache only works for Maya. If I want to be able to get this into something where I can use somewhere else, you'll see I can do an Alembic cache. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say export all to Alembic. It's going to tell me where it's going to export to. I'm just going to do mine to the desktop just so I can keep up with it. And I'm going to call this test. And it's gonna it's going to cache out. If you look over here in the options, you can see it's gonna use my time slider and it's gonna do one step at a time. I'm not gonna pre-roll it. Um pre-roll would be if you if you have frames that start your start your simulation set up before your simulation starts. So if you have some things that need to settle down or do things like that, then you can actually catch the pre-roll of that too. <coughs> that is not needed. Because I, I really don't have a pre-roll. And I've got that set up. So I'm going to go here and say export all. Now you'll see that what this does. It says that my fluid 1, shape 1, is an unsupported type of K fluid. So fluids can be saved in the Olympic cache. But of course my fluid cannot be saved in the Olympic cache. So to get around that, I'm just going to stop building my Olympic cache. <coughs> only thing I did was just held down the escape button to stop it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my um, fluids form up again just so I have something to select. I'm going to select my fluids and I can also look in here. Now you might be like, where's your bounding box for your fluids? I actually turned that off. So in my fluids, excuse me, in my uh, in my actual fluid shape, you can see there is a bounding boundary draw. And I turned it off. So I could do, you know, bounding box, and there you see it again. I could do just the, you know, bottom. I could do reduced. <coughs> I could do it as an outline so I can see all of it or full. But I just do none because I don't really need to see it. I, I know where my particles are at. <coughs> Excuse me. So I know where everything is at. So what I'm going to do is I am going to say, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to save this because I've been working on this for a, for a while and I haven't saved it. I've left it and come back to it and left it and come back to it. So let me, let me actually save it. I would not suggest doing that either. Like just leaving it and come back to it. It might crash. So got it saved. I'm going to come in here and go to modify, go to convert, and you will see there actually is a conversion to convert fluids to polygons. And I'm going to click on that. And what that does is you'll see that my fluids are now actually polygonal uh, shapes. So if I hit play, you'll see that my fluid does, it forms up the way that it's supposed to. Because in the end, 
your fluids, if you were gonna really use these, you you would probably want something that's a real mesh that you can interact with. Like, you can still put a shader on this, it still works the same way, you still can put, you know, a um, transparency shader that makes this a little bit luminous and kind of uh, semi-transparent and, and things like that. So you still can get the same effects with the shader, but you'll see now <coughs> that my fluids actually are polygonal mesh, and it's a pretty heavy mesh. If I come in here and let's actually go to display, I'm going to heads up display, and let's turn on our poly count and see what our poly counts look like. We are at, eh, it's not that bad. Actually, we are at uh, 50,000 uh, polygons. Or verts, rather. We're at 98,000 faces. So, not too bad. You know, computer's still running pretty good and everything else is going. Now, the cool thing about this is if I were to go in here and <coughs> and tweak some things out, let's see if I went back in here and put this down to 20 and rewind this, you can see now that my fluid actually is still working. Like, so instead of seeing that voluminous kind of cloud, I actually can see what the real polygons would look like. So this is actually very useful. Um, I'm gonna put this is at 60, and let's see. You can see, yeah, look, it's forming up. Everything's working well. So you can see my fluid actually still is working just like I wanted it to. It's not killing anything. Nothing's dying. So now the cool thing is, is because this is a polygon, I can come in here and I can go. Um, excuse me, I can go in here and actually go to my cache. Now, if you're in Maya 2016, there is a caching menu, and I'm going to go and say cache, and I'm going to say export all to Alembic. So now, it'll actually let me export this as Alembic cache. Your Alembic cache files are, um, Alimb are actually um, an ABC file. It has polygons. So it's basically caching out my fluids. And now my fluids are no longer that volumetric kind of at atmospheric um, voxel. They are real polygons. And sometimes I think that the performance is a little bit better when these are polygons because these are easier for Maya to calculate than voxels are. Because your fluids use voxels, and Maya knows how to use them, knows what they are, but they, it just it's just a little bit more taxing on the um, on the system when you're trying to render voxels as opposed to just straight up polygons, right? So keep that in mind as well. Now I'm going to pause this while this finishes um, exporting out my limbic cache, and then I'll show you how I can bring this limbic cache into another file. <coughs> So we can see that my cache is finished. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to save. So I'm just going to save my file. So I'm just going to go in here and save scene. And I'm going to get a brand new scene. And now you see I have a brand new scene. Nothing up my sleeve. And I'm going to come here to pipe, pipeline cache, or in yours it would be cache. And I'm going to say I want to import my Alembic. And let's go to the desktop. And there's my ABC file. And let's import it. And you can see everything came in with it. So everything is here. Um, the, and it brought in everything. As you can see, it brought in my geometry. It brought in my... And you'll see this is actually still a revolved surface shape. So this is still um, your traditional Maya <clears throat> um, geometry. So it didn't do anything funky. It's actually still your real geometry. I can hide this stuff and everything else actually works like now look at the speed of this this thing is like super fast because it's no longer this now your curves and stuff are still the same but your um your fluids are no longer calculating so your fluids are now fixed 
So whatever you did to your fluids, that's what they are. And you can see there is no fluid in, well, there's still the, sh there's still the transform node for it, but the fluids no longer exist. Neither do the particles nor the nucleus. None of those things exported um, when I exported this. But <clears throat> what's cool is, is that now I have the real form of my, of my volume of my uh, liquids, of my fluids. So this is something that I can still, you know, put shaders onto. Like let's look, let's look in here and and see what shader. <coughs> Excuse me, that I can drop onto this. I've got a couple of shaders. I got a couple of V-ray shaders in here. Let's see, right? Let's see. Let's, let's look in mental ray. Mental ray. Mental ray ain't got no shaders. Well, your shade is at mental ray. Oh man! If you don't see me later, I've, I've 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 died somewhere. That's just that's just what it is. Just died. <coughs> oh, let's see, let's see. I don't want to use <clears throat> I don't want to use V-Ray because I don't want to have to actually load up V-Ray. And I was sure that I had a Maya shader. Let's just, just drop this guy on there. There we go. There we go. So Maya has a built-in ocean shader. <coughs> That's already already built into Maya. So I'm just gonna use that. And if you see now, look at that. I got like this like water type of gelatinous stuff building up. It's like blah 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 blah. blah. And you can see where my particles kind of were in the original shape. If I stop this and I just go render this really quick, you know, it's gonna render with that shader on it. So I can make this look however I want. I have this and I set it up to be a tornado. But I could use this shape for a lot of different other things. I, it doesn't have to necessarily be a tornado. Now, for the project that you're doing, of course, you want it to be a tornado. But um, you could, it could be tons of other things if you choose it to be. And this is taking, a, this is going to take a while to render. I can tell. I can all rest to tell. This is going to take a while to render. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like a southern, southern dignitary all of a sudden. So if I don't want to render it, I'm just gonna stop it, hit escape, and not render it. Yeah. So you can see everything is in there, um, and everything came in with it, and it's cool. Um, <clears throat> So this is a great way to be able to take pieces, export them out of individual Maya files, and then import them into bigger Maya files, especially when you're working on small pieces of destruction or tearing things apart. This is the best way to do it, to do it in pieces, bring it all back together, and then have your final composited shot. So hopefully this has been helpful for you and being able to save out your Alembic cache and, you know, it's just make sure that you're saving an awful lot right because Maya just sometimes will if you don't if you don't have a lot of RAM Maya will just kind of start to lock up and die on you so just keep that in mind too so anyway until next time my digital mutants I am Domico L sick Cunningham better known as Dr. Media until next time cheers <laughs>